Today's video is brought to you by Common Sense, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever found that weird shady link on the internet? Something that sounds a little too good to be true? Free GTA 5 download on my iPhone, click here. Well, using Common Sense, you can actually find out that that would probably not be a good idea. Clicking links like that is not exactly smart and it could lead to you losing your data, being plugged into a botnet, which is actually the focal point of today's video. So if you want to find out how to get some common sense, go to www.commonsense. What am I saying? Just use common sense. Be a little more intelligent. Be more vigilant. Now, today's story about the world's, I guess you could say, most prevalent, largest botnet finally just got subverted and taken down by the good old FBI and the Dutch National Police. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've always talked about massive cyber attacks. Anytime bad things happen to criminal computer hacking gangs, I get excited. I always research this stuff and I always try to find a way to condense it and bring it to you guys so you all can laugh along with it alongside me. Okay. All right. I, I like to share the giddy feeling. Now, this one, ladies and gentlemen, is known as CACBOT. Okay. Now, CACBOT. All right. Well, it sounds kind of like a, like, like a duck, like QuackBot. Ladies and gentlemen, the FBI actually uh, disrupted that in an international cyber takedown. So from Los Angeles, the Justice Department today announced a multinational operation with the U.S., France, Germany, the Netherlands, the U.K., Romania, and Latvia to disrupt the botnet and malware known as CACBOT. So to understand, the CACBOT uh, takedown was also more than just taking down the botnet. It was also the seizure of $8.6 million in cryptocurrency, all generated from illicit profit. So for people who wonder, Muda, does crime really pay? Unfortunately, in the world of cybersecurity, yeah, it does. And, and, and it's great money until the feds catch you. And then you'll be sent to a black site where you're tortured for, I don't know what happens. Okay, those, they, they, they get bad charges. People who say, what if they get hired? <laughs> well, that exists only in Hollywood. <laughs> because in reality, a lot of these people are probably just like script kiddies or people behind the scenes who are using already developed technology in order to sell a service that eventually will get taken down by a crafty group of counter hackers. So cyber criminals who rely on material malware like CACBOT to steal private data from innocent vi victims have been reminded today that they do not operate outside the bounds of the law. God bless. Thank you. An international partnership led by the Justice Department and the FBI resulted in the dismantling of CACBOT, one of the most notorious botnets ever responsible for massive losses to victims around the world. And it's not just like a tiny amount too. We're talking like in cases up to like over a hundred million US dollars worth of damages to actual individuals. So again, what had happened over here was QBot, QuackBot, or Pink Slipbot was actually controlled by a cyber criminal organization and used to target critical industries worldwide, industries that we rely on to live from day to day. So if you ever get anxious about like if your critical services are staying up, Rest assured that there's a group of uh, caffeinated security uh, group uh, or security researchers out there making sure life is good for you, okay? But if they falter, things can get kind of bad. So CACBOT was actually so prolific that it was used basically as a means of infection by some of the largest groups, groups we've covered like Revil, Prolock, Black Basta, Mega Cortex, Prolock, and Conti. And of course, these guys would then extort their victims, seek ransomware payments in Bitcoins, and then return access to computer networks. It was just the ransomware grift over and over again. And based on the amount of cryptocurrency that was seized, obviously it makes money. So what they did was they actually targeted business, healthcare providers, government agencies all over the world. So yeah, uh, if you thought that these people had no, uh, no morals, no ethics, you're absolutely goddamn right. They would attack a children's hospital if they could which has happened before, and because that was such a dastardly deed, some people who were selling these illegal services had a bit of a come to Jesus moment and said, okay, we're bad, but not that bad. So how the FBI ended up taking this down was that they got access to their infrastructure and identified that the actual infection went out to 700,000 computers worldwide. Uh, over 200,000 of those were just in the United States alone. So this truly was an international effort. So basically what had happened was the FBI had redirected the traffic from the botnet to servers that the FBI ended up controlling, 
which they then basically, uh, you know, sent instructed infected computers all over the United States to download a file that would be created by the FBI and their law enforcement friends to uninstall the malware right there. So the FBI basically hacked into the network, redirected traffic, and then used their own tools to send a fix without any of the uh, hacked computer's consent. They basically sounded a fix all over throughout their networks, effectively dismantling a really, really nasty botnet all over the world. Now you might be wondering, but Muda, could I be infected by CACBOT? The answer is, yeah, you might have been infected at some point if you were a little bit uncareful on the internet. Now, CACBOT exists in numerous forms. This is just one sample that I've downloaded. You could run these samples within a virtual machine and probably realize that CACBOT's a little bit too smart for it. So I'm gonna let the boys over at CISA help describe exactly what happened over here. So according to CISA, this is not an image that's CACBOT. These are just cute little chickens that they have sitting on a keyboard. Man, God damn, they have a lot of fun over there, don't they? <laughs> But of course, one of the things that they said is CACBOT, QBOT, or Pink Slipbot was discovered in 2008. So this is a pretty old piece of uh, ransomware malware equipment that exists that unfortunately bad groups have been taken care of, that have been using it, that have been updating it as time has passed. So again, it's a pretty intensive piece of malware and the way that it gets into your system is actually by hiding itself within known computer programs to avoid detection. So for instance, according to Process Explorer here, QB.exe, which is CACBOT, was actually hiding within Internet Explorer. You might be like, but Muna, what's Internet Explorer? Internet Explorer was an Internet Explorer, Internet browsing tool uh, back in the olden days, okay? Back in the original Web 1.0 days. I know some of y'all watching probably don't even know what Chromium really is. Yes, uh, this is the Internet, this, this is the dominant browser back in the day, okay? Now, the way that this hit itself was it also checked for virtual machines. So things like VMware, CWS Sandbox, uh, VirtualBox, and really any other form of virtualization. And by doing this, it wouldn't try to hide itself if it was being run under a VM, which typically means that it's trying to be investigated, which it doesn't want anybody to look into it uh, beyond what it offers. So again, even beyond all of it, there was moments where this would shapeshift, where the binary code was modified, recompiled, and then re-encrypted. It would constantly establish persistence, and the way that it infected you was actually through a malicious email that would be sent to somebody unsuspecting, right? Like imagine a boomer, you know, working at a big company, you know, they, they get an email sent to them from like advertising or like another division. They don't know any better. They'll click on the PDF file. They'll open the links. And as soon as they open the zip link, they would be sent a VBS downloader, which would contain instructions to go to a distribution site to fetch an executable file that would then run on the victim's computer. However, it would also check for anti-VMs. So if it realized that it was running under a virtual machine, it would just nope out of there. Uh, no point letting a security researcher understand how bad you are. Once it realized that it was a victim, not a researcher, it would decrypt and run inside explorer.exe, which would basically be the display manager for Windows. Or really, it could be any program. Then it would launch a main payload, which would then communicate to a bot list, tier two proxies, and then finally the command and control servers, which relay instructions back to any botnet slave that exists. So we've talked about what botnets are, but what is it like to be a slave? The reality is because of botnets and how convoluted some of these can be, it can actually be quite difficult to detect if you have been attacked. This is a very uh, intricate piece of malware that is capable of hiding itself. And there are pieces of botnets that are actually stronger than this. If a botnet is capable of hiding itself really well, you probably won't ever realize that you've been infected. One of the things you can always do is memory dump your system and then actually line by line, process by process, examine what the shady programs are running on your system. But if you're not knowledgeable, you may not know what's shady and what isn't. You could look through your network stacks, but again, if these take advantage of higher level systems, higher level drivers, you may not be able to properly analyze this unless you actually have a lab capable of doing so. How many people have a setup like that? Very, very few.
According to BlackBerry, which is a security researching company now, not, not a phone company anymore, uh, <laughs> their strategy is stealth. To avoid detection, CACBOT evaluates a local system environment and will not decrypt its payload or execute in some scenarios. So example, if you have virtualization, or when you have certain products, security products like antivirus software, or security software in general if it's present. This allows CACBOT to conceal its functionality by preventing security researchers from quickly obtaining and analyzing the payload. Again, CACBOT's stealth strategy is injecting itself or piggybacking onto legitimate processes, like Internet Explorer, like a email client, like something innocuous, something that you would never recognize uh, on your system that's actually hijacked. And because it would actually inject itself into the Windows registry, uh, what would happen is even if you restarted your computer or you know cleaned things out, CACBOT would establish persistence, meaning that as soon as you fired up your computer, you were instantly connected to the botnet. So what the hell is a botnet used for, Muda? What, what do I do if I'm part of it? The reality is if you have 700,000 computers willing to do whatever you ask at a moment's notice, you could theoretically get away with a lot of nastiness. Things like DDoS attacks. There's a lot of things one can do with a botnet. You can use the 700,000 strong computer system, this big mega computer in the cloud, to basically do whatever you want. Attack targets, share files, hide things, so on and so forth. Botnets are great for a lot of things, okay? Unfortunately, a grand majority of those things are really, really bad, which is why they're actually really valuable tools to a lot of these hacker groups. The more systems you have under your control, the more nastiness that you can get away with. You may be able to download entire servers onto the if you had hundreds of thousands of computers willing to download at a moment's notice. You could stealthily download files distributed across multiple different systems without anybody really knowing. I want to also stress that there's good legal botnets as well that are used for some pretty good tasks. For instance, one of them is SETI at Home, which is currently in hibernation, but they actually help you. You basically give up some of your computer resources, your internet to help analyze radio telescopic data that helps you try to find life outside of our planet. You also have Folding at Home, which is a bit more practical for finding cures for diseases like cancer, ALS, Parkinson's, Huntington's, influenza, many other diseases. So if you ever want to give up some of your computer resources to help, you know, a seriously good cause, then you can join a good legal botnet. There are good things out there. The technology of botnets can be used for good. Unfortunately, there's just a whole heck of a lot of bad ones out there. So while they took down an entire system, a botnet that caused hundreds of millions of dollars of business, uh, of business damage worldwide, but of course, if you take one botnet down, it's not as if it goes away forever. The people who are operating this botnet have most definitely already begun to start another botnet under this. It's kind of like, you know, shady crypto gambling websites. Once you shut one down, they just move the assets to another brand and start fresh and new all over again. The only good side to this is once you stop a network of 700,000 computer bots, you've bought yourself some time. But of course, time in a landscape of constant cyber warfare means nothing when the hacker group comes back again the next year or the next five years with a botnet that may be a million computers strong, maybe even beyond that. What we do know is a lot of people who are affected have been stopped. And thanks to Operation Duck Hunt, yes, Yes, that's what this is called. <laughs> the FBI and a lot of cops actually managed to stop a pretty bad group of hackers. So ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully you got an idea of how bad this really was. And generally, if you're worried about being infected, um, just be careful on the internet. Refer to our sponsor, Common Sense. And if you feel that you have been hacked, Please do a memory dump, run an antivirus tool. I may not be the biggest supporter or trustworthy man of antivirus software, but generally speaking, while I use a lot of common sense, most people, while they do even use common sense, don't have the expertise to keep their systems and data safe. So again, run an antivirus check, be very careful, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, yeah, uh, definitely, you know, big claps to the FBI and law enforcement partners for shutting down one of the most notorious botnets all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.